welcome to another video here on Sam's Crafty Castle, and today we are doing a little interactive card. Um, so I want to start this out by saying, do not use this video to tell you how to put the interactive card together. Most of the time when I film videos on interactive cards, it's the first time I'm doing them, and that was the case with this one. So these are all the die cut pieces. We're doing a Magic Iris card today from Lawn Fawn, and I highly highly encourage you to go ahead and watch their video um, and consider this more of a inspiration video if you will rather than a how to do the interactive card video this happened to be the first time i did one i did film me putting it together but i did the whole thing backwards thought i did it backwards um so therefore undid it all did it again what i thought was the right way ended up that that time I did it backwards and I actually had it right the first time and it was just so clunky and like annoying I even had a hard time following what I was doing when I was editing so I decided to just this like just make this a magic iris inspiration video rather than necessarily a how-to video now I do have another idea using this die set so um we might revisit it or I shouldn't say we might we, we most likely will I did add it to like my my schedule of videos um and that one with a little more experience under my belt I'll try to do it in more of a like how to put together the interactive part of the video but um if you're looking to learn how to use this die um please go check out Lawn Pond's video their tutorial their tutorials on their interactive dies are always awesome um and just go over there if you want to learn how to use it and just use this as like a fun idea if you already have it. Um, I am sorry about that, but um, it just, it, I couldn't even follow what I was doing when I was trying to edit it and I was like, this is just going to be too confusing for people, but I really, really like this card, so I didn't want to get rid of the video. Um, so I was just like, okay, we'll just, we'll just preface right at the beginning that this is just an inspiration video and not necessarily a how-to uh, video. So, I had cut all the die cut pieces for that I needed for the Magic Iris die. And now I'm just going through and basically doing all of the decorating. We're going with this little mousy bubble theme. I got this bubbly mouse set. Um, I can't remember the name of it, but it'll be in the description down below. Um, when it first came out, because I thought it was cute. And I hadn't used it yet. So, I thought this would be a very fun way to use it. And... There's a lot of circles going on with, like, the magic iris thing. And I actually went into this with a completely different idea. Freaked myself out, thought it wasn't going to work, and decided I needed to do something different. And thus, this bubbly card was born. And, um, but I, after doing this one, I do think my other idea will work. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to try that one um, in a couple months. We're going to try it. So, um, I'm just doing, like I said, the decoration bits here. I thought this fizzy stencil from Gina K Designs looked very bubbly and kind of went with the bubble theme. Uh, so I am just ink blending all of the pieces in Ocean Mist ink. Now, could I have just cut these all in, like, blue paper and done it that way? Yes, absolutely. Um, but I like the ink bloody look of things. It's a little softer and all that kind of jazz, and I thought it looked better with the sort of bubble theme I had going on. It looks a little more like a sky rather than with the fact that it's not like a dyed solid color like um, you would get if you had a paper. Uh, so that was that's the explanation for that. Um, and then I'm just stenciling over them because the with the gray to make it look like bubbles. Now what would have been really cool and what I actually do do this later um, is you could also clear like heat emboss these but I was worried that that would be too thick with um for the mechanism part of it to work I was worried it would get kind of stuck so I didn't um go with that but I do do it on the background which was what we're going to work on right now so that's why a, a little Andy static tool because um we are going to heat emboss on this one and it does come out really well I think it would be cool I thought it would be cool too to do it in like a glitter gel or like an iridescent kind of like stencil paste or something if you have something like that um that would probably be really fun too to get more of a a kind of bubbly effect but there's a lot of pieces to this I will say that there was a lot more like decorating to it than than I originally sort of anticipated um but I do, I really like how this card comes out in the end. It's really, really cute, I think. Um, 
so it's it's fun and the bubble the bubbly i love lawn fawn mice i don't know about you guys but i think the lawn fawn mice are great so i am just doing um oh and i'm using whisper ink for all of the bubbles i don't think i said that uh it is a little dark grayish when you look at it um and i think that's just because i was testing out a couple different grays which you saw me do earlier um and here oh i want to talk about this too really quick we'll go back to the whole gray thing in a second um so this is the gina k designs embossing ink and i just want the bubbly bits to be embossed i don't want um like the background to be embossed so i'm using these paper pouncers from picket fence which i mean if you've watched my crop and create vlogs you've heard me talk about them but this is the first time that i'm like using them in a non-vlog video um they work great for your pigment inks and your embossing inks that's pretty much why i bought them i did buy all of the colors because the full set, full set syndrome kicked in um but really, I bought them to use with, like, my embossing inks and my pigment inks and stuff like that. Because ink, using brushes, like, can you use a brush with, like, an embossing ink or a pigment, pigment ink? Yes. Um, there is no rule stating that you cannot do that. Um, but it's really annoying and really uncomfortable. <laughs> um, at least for me. It just doesn't, like, feel good, if that makes any sense. Um but with the paper pouncers it's a lot easier and i got pretty decent results with it um i could have done a little bit more my embossing pad might also need um a little bit of a re-inking situation as well and i'm also just re i'm still developing my heat embossing skills they're not it's not my best technique if you will so sometimes my embossing is a little funky and even like i there's definitely spots that i missed like i can tell plus not to mention all my embossing powder is at least eight years old um and it's probably getting to the point where it was time to start thinking about replacing a lot of it but a lot of it is also almost used up so i'm trying to get as much out of it as i can um before i start thinking about like replacing some of it um embossing powder doesn't necessarily go bad bad but it just doesn't work as well eventually and that's kind of where we are so there's the mechanism um for the magic iris card before we finish decorating it um, you know, once I make these interactive cards, I just can't stop playing with them. <laughs> so I did play with it a bunch and it also helps it loosen up a little bit too. Um, cause sometimes they need a little coaxing at the beginning. Um, but yeah, I don't, I confused myself so bad making this one and I had it right the whole time. And then I watched another part of the video from Lawn Fawn and thought I did it backwards. And then I ended up having it right the whole time and I tested it and it worked and I still thought it was wrong. So, you know trust yourself a little bit more than I trust myself, I guess. <laughs> um, now I'm just going to decorate. This will be the outer part of the circle that you will see. It'll cover up sort of all of the inner workings of um, our Magic Iris card, and this is will be the front. So I'm just taking these fun bubbles. These bubbles are so cool. And stamping them all over. I'm not going to color them or anything like that, um, but... They're just going to make a bubbly effect, and I am going to go in and fill in all of those big gaps because I did not realize I left that many big gaps when I was doing this um, the first time until I started editing. And then I was like, wow, there's a lot of big gaps, but it had been so long since I filmed the video that I couldn't remember that I went back and filled them in, and I was kind of nervous about it, but I filled them in. It's all good. Um, there's a smaller set that I use. There we go. I'm going to do it right now. There's a smaller set that I use to fill in some of those bigger gaps so that there's bubbles everywhere. Um, do you guys like bubbles? I like bubbles. My dog used to really like bubbles. She's getting older, so we can't really do bubbles like we used to, um, cause she gets too excited and then she hurts herself. Um, and she's just, she's kind of getting too old for that. Um, <laughs> but but bubbles are fun. I do like bubbles. Um, I'm a big Disney girl, as most of you probably know and can probably guess from my channel name if you didn't know. <laughs> and I love, actually, there's a lot of debate sometimes in, like, the Disney Parks community about kids and bubble wands, because Disney sells bubble wands. And some kids, you know, just get a little bit excited about the bubbles, and they use them everywhere, and they get everywhere, kind of. Um... But I actually enjoy that. I think more kids should have bubble wands and have bubbles out because I don't really care if a kid bubble, you know, makes all the bubbles go in my direction because I think the bubbles are fun. <laughs> so, but I also know people who, like I said, really don't like the bubble bubble gums and think bubble bu bubble guns 
and think they're really annoying. <laughs> or bubble wands, I guess, technically. And, um, but yeah, I like the bubble wands. I, sh I might buy myself one on my next trip. Maybe, maybe not. But I'm tempted right this minute. Um, I've also been obnoxiously craving the bakery in France at World Showcase, if you know what I'm talking about. Um, I have, <coughs> excuse me. I have been craving that for like weeks, um, and that's totally off topic, but it was just in my brain. Okay, so we're going to finish this up now, and we're going to get back on the topic of the card and not on my Disney World um, thoughts, but so I have to test this because the original plan I had did not actually work um, at all. There we go. Um, the little mechanism did not fit on the card the way that I thought it would. And I had to make sure that it would fit. And it does. And then this is the hard part, I think, is lining up the the circle to make sure it fits really nice in there. So I just used a circle that cuts out of the magic iris because I knew that that would fit in there perfectly. But you don't have to do that. Um, you can either just stamp right on the card. I love this. It's so cute. Okay. <laughs> um, and then we have our little mouse who's blowing all of the bubbles. And then we have our his little friend who's watching them. Um, I should have. I bet I have a little cupcake in another set because I know I have a birthday set from Lon Fawn. And it, cause since I went with a birthday theme, it would have been cute if I would have like gave the other mouse a little cupcake. Like they were celebrating his birthday. Wouldn't that have been cute? Um, but I just thought of that right now. <laughs> um, but I thought Make a Wish worked. I mean, it's not super bubbly. Like if it was the dandelion set, it probably would have made more sense. But none of the bubble greetings fit in the middle the way that I wanted them to. So, it's okay. This worked out fine. Um, but that's basically it. So it was still a really, really easy card. Um, and if I wouldn't have weirdly confused myself building the Magic Iris, this is probably one of the easiest interactive cards I've done. Um, just don't confuse yourself and don't overthink it. That was my problem. Don't do that. Um, if I could give you any advice on it, it's just don't overthink it. You probably know what you're doing. Um, more than you think you do. But that's that. That's li literally the card. Um, and it's really fun and really easy, and I definitely think there's, there's more things you can do, and I'm excited to share my other idea with you now that I'm fairly confident that it'll actually work. Um, so, yeah, that's that. I'm gonna leave you. So, because this is the end of the video, that shouldn't be that surprising. Um, so thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment down below. And I will see you again soon, and have a crafty day.